What's going on guys, and welcome to another custom diecast video. So this video is going to be an in-depth look at how I built this Hot Wheels 50 concept into a samurai car. Here's the starting car, and let's open it up. You might be able to tell, I'm not actually pushing on the drill. I'm letting the bit do all the work. I, I see people post photos or stories of them drilling into their fingers and hands. Please be careful if you guys are gonna do this. Looks like we got a little windshield in there. There's the inner part with the seats and the motor. I'll take these wheels off too. I'm not sure if I'm going to use these. Probably not. But I do keep them all. They might come in handy on another project. So this is what we have to start with. Alright, so thinking about a samurai build, the idea that I had looking at this car was to make a samurai's helmet. The top area of the body of the car kind of looks like a head or a helmet shape, so I want to give it those layers of armor. And I started by using some of this cardstock that I used on my tank build. I actually use this quite a bit. It's easy to cut, it's easy to work with. You could soak up super glue and get pretty stiff to take paint and things with no problem. And when I started making this, it was a bit too short in the back. So I traced out the curve on another side of that cardstock and it'll give us a shape that looks a little bit closer to these kinds of helmets here. And you can see, this is kind of what I'm trying to recreate on the back of this car. Alright, so we have one of these now, but what we need to do is, we need to make layers. And what we can do is, we can trace this to get the same curve. And we'll have to shorten it up a bit, but this will give us the same curvature. Again, taking this out of some cardstock, just some kitchen shears. And these need to be cut down a little bit widthwise to show the under layer of armor all the way down. Just a quick snip and there we go. Let's see how they look on the car. Looks pretty good to me. Alright, so it's time to do some super gluing, and this is the best super glue that I have found. Not because it's a nice glue or anything, but because it comes with these really tiny nozzles. Nice, they're really long and they have a really small tip on the end. I would highly recommend buying super glue in small quantities. So these are, I think these are one gram or one and a half grams each or something like that. The reason being that when the super glue is exposed to the air, it starts to go bad. It starts to get all gummed up and hardened. You can see the tip here. Really small. And that allows you to get out just a tiny bit of glue exactly where you want it to go. And I just buy this glue from the dollar store here. You get three of these applicators for a dollar. It's pretty good. So you can see the applicator tip right here going right to where we want it to go.
Oh no! Okay, well, time to bring out the big guns. Baking soda. This stuff is on every single one of my cars. I have not built a single thing that hasn't had baking soda in it. So you can see, put on some super glue, dip it in the baking soda. The baking soda instantly hardens the glue and it turns into like a little cement. So if you're impatient like me, it works really well. And you might look at this and say, well, that is, that is super messy. You're getting it all over the place. Yeah, but I'm gonna cover this up with more layers of armor and I would rather this be nice and strong and I don't wanna wait for the glue to harden. So we're just building up and you can build this up in layers like I'm doing now. Put some glue, sprinkle some baking soda, some more glue, some more baking soda and so on. You can build up as many layers as you want and just keep going and going. I like to keep a brush. This is just a soft makeup brush, just to brush away all the dust. And it does get a little bit messy, but that's all right, we're making a mess. A really, really good thing about this as well is that you can file it down. You can sand it, you can file it. It's rock hard and it cures instantly. So here, fast forwarding a little bit, I put on all three layers of that armor and actually, I use the windshield as the visor for the helmet. So make use of what you can. I thought it was already the right shape, the right size, just glue it right on top. And then my next idea was to make the front of the body, the frame there into teeth. So. Sometimes the samurai helmets included like a face mask area, as you can see here. And I thought that those two bars going across the middle would look really cool as fangs or really pointy incisors. So I started to file away at those, put some points on them, get them looking like some really mean teeth. And that was taking a long time, so I broke out the Dremel. And uh, I'm going to shave away some of this with a Dremel, but if you guys use a Dremel, please, please wear a dust mask and some safety glasses. So trying to be super careful about not cutting the side of the car there. Just wanted to shave down enough to fit a file in. And you can see I nicked it a bit, but that's all right. This is Gaslands. You can just cover it up later. And this is where we're at. I was liking the size and the shape of the teeth, but I still needed to round them over. They were a bit blocky. I wanted to give them a nice tooth shape. So that's what I'm doing here. That's where we're at with the teeth. I think they came out pretty good. I really like the asymmetry. And this is when I realized that it looks like a predator. But we'll fix that later. So I found these wheels that came from a tractor, a Tomica tractor. All right, guys, this is amazing. Sometimes when you're doing kit bashing like this, things just fit really well. So take a look at this chassis from the tractor. Look at that. That's just asking to be put together. I was already using these wheels, so it just made sense to use those fenders from the tractor. And I need to take off these tabs because they're in the way. So I brought out the Dremel again and started cleaning that up a bit to put these pieces together. I needed to take off quite a bit of metal.
But as you can see, we get there in the end. And that is looking pretty good. They're even the color that I want. Just making sure of the fit. Checking the fit of all of the parts is something I do countless times during a build. I also had this windshield laying around from a really cheap car, I don't remember what, but I thought that would look really cool as a, an extension off the back, kind of framing out those wheels, providing some more armor. We're gonna have to shave it down a bit and finagle it, but I think it came out pretty good in the end, you'll see it later on. And here I'm mocking up the front wheels and the rear wheels. And I'm liking the stance, that looks pretty good. So I used some of this styrene I-beam or H-beam and uh, propped up the interior. I had to shave down a bit more of that metal to get these to mesh together better. And uh, yeah, it's sitting pretty nice now. So speaking of things that fit really well together, this is crazy. And this happens pretty often if you, if you keep a lot of bits of plastic around, but look how perfect these bits fit on here. They even line up in the front with the tractor casting. I mean, you couldn't design something this perfect. Look at that. These are just some bits of plastic I had laying around. I'm not sure the brand of these? There's some kind of train toy. It's like a staircase, but they, they have these tabs where they stick together, and I didn't like how those looked, so I took a file to them and got those that stair step look all the way down. You can see there, nice and cleaned up. And it looks like it was never there. So I went ahead and did that to the other side too. And now I have two mirrored side skirts. We're gonna rough these up a bit later to get them in the wasteland, but you can see how they, they used to go together there as a staircase. Really small scale. I, like I said, I'm not sure the brand or, or what these were. I got them at a secondhand shop for like a buck or a whole bag of them. But, oh man, look at that fit. It just right up to the body line, right up to the chassis. Perfect. I think the aesthetic works really well with Japanese and samurai. It looks like a wooden screen. It looks so good. So mocking up again, really important to always look at that. And I noticed that the front wheels were going to be sitting too high. So I started thinking maybe I need some different wheels and certainly going to need to make a new axle. And that's when I brought up my, my wheel box. So there's nothing fancy here and I, I don't have any 3D printed wheels or anything like that. These are all off of other cars that I've opened up. And I'm just searching for some wheels that are similar size. I want them to be a bit bigger, a little bit wider, but nothing too huge. But these ones don't really work for me. And they're rubber as well, which is kind of annoying. Just looking for a fit. And then I found these Matchbox wheels and they're perfect. I mean, down to the color. Look at that match on the back. Completely different brand, completely different vehicle, but just perfect fit. So these are the wheels that I went with and uh, we're gonna have to put an axle on there. And I like to use this C-channel. I think it's C-channel, U-channel. It's a styrene stock that has one open side. And the cross section is a U. Probably a U, maybe a C. I don't know, have a look. But these axles just slot right in there. And it gives you a really good flat gluing surface to stick on the other side, you can see here. 
if my fingers weren't in the way. <laughs> there we go, put some super glue in. Again, that nice applicator tip gets right where it needs to go. And I wanna reinforce that. Because, you know, if you're gonna play with this thing and roll it around, you don't wanna push on a tiny, weak super glue joint. It needs to be a bit stronger with some baking soda, cement, whatever you wanna call it. I use this stuff on everything. Look how strong that is. Alrighty. And the wheels fit in there real nice, and they still roll. And we're going in again for mock-up number 47. Look at that. But the next thing we need to look at is the teeth. And I had the, the incisors there, but I needed some more of the regular teeth on the top and the bottom. And I had this laying on my desk. This is a serrated knife or I don't know what you would call it it's the the part of a aluminum foil package where you rip the foil and this one's actually it's made out of some kind of plasticky paper some kind of coated paper but it's perfectly rigid and really easy to work with the only problem was I, I thought the teeth were a little bit pointy and I wanted to knock down those points so I took a file uh, a little bit finer file to them and, and got the points knocked back a bit to give them a more rounded biting surface. As you can see here, they're not they're not pointy teeth. And we want to keep this, you know, at least somewhat authentic. So I saturated those in super glue after sticking them on and still kind of looks like a predator, but I think it's getting closer to samurai. And here I'm gluing on that back armor piece that I talked about before. And reinforcing with baking soda. That's right. Okay, now we gotta do something about those front windshield openings. They're really long to the sides. And uh, I end up going with this sanding mesh and only on the, on the sides. I wanted to keep the eyes nice and open so they still look like a mask but those sides just went back way too far. So I cut a little piece of this sanding mesh out and slotted it into both sides. And then I took uh, another sheet of paper to give those wings to the helmet and I used a, a, like a, an acrylic fingernail, like a false nail for the top. I put some mesh on there, you can see through that fingernail, it just didn't look right. And uh, I also added, using the styrene, I added the sword to the front, you can see, poking out there, and the moon shape, crescent, on the front of the helmet. But now what I'm doing is cutting lots and lots and lots of little tiny rivets. This is actually something I've been doing recently with all of my cars. It's a really good way to add small texture and detail to provide a sense of scale. And it's really easy. I mean, it takes time, of course, but uh, basically I'm just gonna take these little tiny bits and stick them all the way around, kind of to mimic the stitching of the helmet. So using this Tamiya Extra Thin, plastic cement. Just use that applicator tip to pick it up. You can't even see it, it's so small. And then wiggling them on there. So something to note here is that the Tamiya cement is not gluing it to the paper. Um, the cement is a solvent that kind of melts the styrene a bit which makes it sticky. So it does stick on, but it's not gonna be fastened on. Uh, and I actually go in later and apply some super glue to the bottom edge of all of those. And you can see I went 
ahead and did around all the bottom and then I added some columns going up all of the armor pieces and I got this this pattern inspiration from the the source images that I used so I added some more rivets to the sides here and I added some to the front armor and of course because I couldn't help myself I went ahead and added some helmet detail I think it needed a little bit more I added some rivets on the back there the back armor piece it just needed to look a bit more like a helmet and I think I pulled it off so here it is all base coated. Uh, unfortunately, my camera setup, I'm still trying to figure out and I have tons of footage of me painting this where the car is not in frame. But let's take a look at it. So remember the starting cast is here, the Hot Wheels HW50 concept. And the theme was Samurai. So let's take a look at what we ended up with. There it is. I didn't rust anything up this time. I wanted to keep it pretty simple. I did add a dusting of pastels like I talked about in my tank video, but this thing just turned out really great. I'll put some more detailed pictures in here. I wanna say thank you for subscribing, watching the video, and I'll see you on the next build.